Welcome to the Absite Smackdown Podcast. We'll talk clinical scenarios, Absite facts, and interesting general surgery knowledge. Now, let's get to it. Hey guys, it's me, Jess, your host of Absite Smackdown Podcast. With me, Dr. Colton Lee and Dr. David Kashmir. So good to see you guys. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? I feel like I haven't seen you for a while, but I know, I know you're in our last podcast. I guess I just, I'm missing you from lack of contact. I don't know all the big breaks. Um, I've been been all over the place. I've been in Vegas. Now I'm back in McAllen, Texas. So I feel like I've just been crisscrossing the country. Yeah. What is the time zone difference between those two? That has to like really kick your butt a little bit. It's Pacific versus central. So Uh it's nice. Whenever I get up at 4 a.m. now, all my friends uh, in Vegas are going to be asleep for another like four to six hours. Convenient. Really nice. (laughs) I I feel like I'd be evil and just be texting people like, hey, what's up? (laughs) Whenever I'm on Eastern time, I have to remember like all my friends in Cali how really late it is. You have to wait till after lunch to send them a message. Dr. K, how are you? Where in the world are you today? Things are good. I'm on East Coast time. I'm in Cincinnati. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so far so good. I'm like always on central time, unless I just cross the border, you know, here in Florida, it's so close between central and Eastern. So, um, what we really want to talk about today, you guys, I know you've seen the last couple episodes where we're talking about all the big changes, everyone matching into their programs, everything going on. So matches over, we've talked about the different routes, but now what happens next? And so, we just want to touch on a little bit about like, if you knew then what you know now, because hindsight is twenty twenty. what would you have done differently going into your surgical residency? The Absite Smackdown podcast is going live. Reserve your seat for our upcoming live Absite review conference. Can't travel? On call? No problem. This online conference is recorded so you can catch up anytime. Reserve your spot by visiting us at absitesmackdown.com and selecting latest news for more information. Well, Jessica, uh, it's a big topic. I'll say that the whole reason I started putting together uh, Absite Smackdown and going through the books, getting the other surgeons involved uh, was really for this reason. And that's because Mm -hmm. Looking back on it, I wished I had uh, more preparatory stuff before I got blindsided by the first absite. Uh, it was stuff that maybe I should have known looking back. I'm not sure how I didn't because it seems so straightforward now. But I would just say that I wanted to ensure resident staff had the best prep for that uh, and had some insider knowledge of what was coming Uh, down the pike. So really for me, all of this, and as usual, I appreciate you guys doing all the stuff you do for it um, and helping make it real. Uh, Really all of this was for that reason. It's, these are things I wish I knew before I ever started my first day. So that's just Mm -hmm. absite stuff, but that's the first thing that comes to mind because that's what we're doing here on the podcast for absite Smackdown. Yeah, but also for you to say maybe you should have known, I think that a lot of people, obviously, you're so focused, it's tunnel vision on just like getting through med school, getting into a program. And so maybe sometimes you focus so much on that, like you're not really thinking about all the things that happen in residency. So it's pretty fresh for you, Dr. Lee, Um, (laughs) young and over there. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience and what now, because you're, you know, still in your residency, what you know, now being more of a senior resident from the beginning coming in. Yeah. I've been trying to hide my evil smile over here. I feel like I should pull out a roll of paper and just unroll it onto the floor. (laughs) Very dramatic. Um, I would say that I'm a first generation physician, first generation surgeon. um, And so I had no idea what GME or medical education looked like before I actually went through it myself. Uh, So everything was fresh. I will say Going back, the thing that has helped me the most uh, over the last four and a half years has been finding a mentor or mentors. Uh, the Absite Smackdown podcast. Visit the Smackdown at AbsiteSmackdown.com. Uh, to make sure that they can give you advice, give you pointers, and give you good feedback, honest feedback, not just feedback that, you know, like everything's great. You want someone who is going to actually tell you, 
you know, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I got when I was a prelim was that one of my upper levels, who's still my best friend to the day, uh, she's like, people, people say you complain a lot. And no one had told me that. And so you want people that give you advice like that. Uh, so I can kind of redirect my energy and, and recognize some of your own faults. Um, mm -hmm. nobody, nobody's gonna be perfect on the journey. And there's so many different aspects, which, which, you know, I could give you advice on, but that's the biggest. So tough love, because sometimes we lack insight, right? Yeah. Did you have a mentor or Dr. K? Nope. Nope. Just busy mentoring it. everyone now. <laughs> totally blind, but that's it. well, really, that's exactly what you said, which is why I believe in it and why I agree with Colton. Uh, you need someone who's walked down the path before. Like Colton, I'm a first timer, the first generation in my family to be a physician and also a surgeon. And, uh, you know, like I said earlier, I wonder looking back on it, how did I not know what was coming? I mean, I knew. I did fourth year rotations. I saw what residents did. I kind of interacted with attendings and saw kind of what they did. How did I not know, not only that the absite was coming, but all the different things, you know, to this day, and as a maybe first year resident, I, I kind of got a sense of what the qualifying versus certifying exams were. Mm -hmm. Qualifying exam, written, certifying exam, oral boards we take. But sometimes even to this day, I have to think about it. Okay, wait, written boards, that's the qualifying exam. And what I mean by that is uh, that's now. After years of doing it, I have to think about it sometimes to get the term yeah. straight. Back then, I had zero shot. And uh, <laughs> like Colton said, um, really the reason why I think to a large degree is uh, I did not have a mentor. I think we should actively seek out mentors. I think having programs in place that promote mentorship are really key. So I completely agree with Colton. If I knew then what I know now, uh, things sure would have been different. That's for sure. I mean, that's one of the things I like about this podcast and about this book and all things we do. We have so many doctors on our team and residents, you know, everyone's answering questions and helping, especially when we do um, the conferences, like we just have it open for questions and help. And, you know, just being able to help anyone a little bit, like just maybe things they haven't thought of. It makes me feel good about the job that we do. So, yeah, I mean, like you always say a lot and why I keep participating and spending the time so much on this is because a lot of what you all do is free. You give mm -hmm. away pretty much a daily fact uh, on uh, all the different social media posts that keeps it in front of myself and colleagues for all the facts. Mm -hmm. You have a resource guide that you guys did to all the current free and semi-free resources, at least a lot of them on the web. And you share that at the website under latest news. And the fact that you guys keep doing that and you kind of stay true to the vision of that, that's why I keep spending the time uh, to kind of, you know, help out with the podcast as much as I can, et cetera, because that is super helpful. And it, again, it, for the, I don't know how many times I've said it, it's something I really wish I had uh, when I was a resident. Right. right. So Dr. Lee, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I cannot picture someone saying like you complain a lot because you are you never complained to me. And I get, I work for you, work with you in this venue, but you're always like ready to go. You're on it. You're so just, you have the best attitude. It is really hard for me to picture that. So do you think that mentorship kind of like changed your insight about yourself on that? Or do I just get to see your pretty side? What, what is that? The Absite Smackdown podcast is based on the best-selling review book, Absite Smackdown, the only Absite review with an entire video review course included. Visit AbsiteSmackdown.com and pick it up today. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, um, I don't know. I think it really did change my insight. Everyone has those moments where they're just kind of, they've had enough and they're like, this is just garbage. And I think yeah. I have those days still. Uh, but yeah. all in all, I, I've become to recognize that, you know, how you're pursued by other people um, is important, right? And so if mm -hmm. you are, you know, available, affable, uh, and capable, then you're going to be, you know, great at your job and people are going to appreciate you and they're going to come to you for help. Uh, and so I, I really made conscious, a conscious effort not to complain and not to blame people around me for things that are out of their control, um, especially in situations like the operating room or patient care and things like that. I uh, recognize that it's not the nurse's fault that the patient hasn't gotten the CT scan yet because um, 
you know, the tech isn't right or something like that. So you have to really recognize those things. Um, I did want to say you asked me a question. I didn't really answer it correctly, but you said, what would I do different? And there is one mm-hmm. thing that I would really do different that I want to touch on. And yeah. that is that start building better habits earlier. Um, and that's something you can do before you start residency or before you start medical school of things like making your bed before you get up in the morning and, you know, being more efficient about the way you study, getting up and going for a run, treating yourself well, eating well, you know, just small things in your day that can build a foundation to make you more successful. Right. I think we've talked about that um, a lot, you know, especially one of the blogs I did where it was how self-care and how you align your day and your living space makes a huge difference in just studying and learning and your overall attitude and like how it's really helpful, especially when you are studying for the exact app site, for example, you know, having kind of like a plan in a special space and it's set up correctly, which is pleasing and makes you feel good. All those things like your daily habits set you up for success or they drain you. And if you put everything in line to make you feel good and push you, then you're not going to feel as drained when those hard things hit you. Right. Exactly. It helps build your resilience. And I don't know, Dr. K may have some habits like that, that he he's mastered in his years as a sensei. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I do now guys, but, uh, but I didn't then Uh, really not at all. I was kind of of the uh, take on it. Um, Just kind of give yourself over to it. Uh, ride the wave. And that was how mm-hmm. I did it. I don't know that that was as effective. I think uh, having better habits, s- focusing on things where you can, like sleep hygiene, uh, all the stuff that's talked about uh, adds years to your practice once you've finished residency. But um, that was not my experience. Uh, mine was uh, routinely um, doing micro sleeps driving behind the, uh, you know, being behind the wheel, uh, kind of feeling the rumble strip and wondering, um, boy, how did I get over kind of to the side of the road here? Or, oh, I guess that light's been green for a while. I should be going. It was Mm -hmm. fairly routine and it's very dangerous. Uh, And I would say the focus now on somewhat sleep hygiene uh, and some of these different things is key. I do Mm -hmm. want to be careful because uh, sometimes resilience uh, almost makes it as if uh, some of the challenges are um, owing to the a failure of the doctor. The doctor's not resilient enough. Or the resident colleague is not resilient enough. I find that if you're having really bright people who have to be super resilient uh, and build all these things that you should perhaps question what kind of system uh, requires such a level of resilience. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's part of why I looked into the quality improvement stuff eventually I did the Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, and I believe there's a lot of opportunity in healthcare to improve our level of quality and system uh, because a, a really a bad system will beat a good doctor every time. Right. So while I do believe in resilience, and I do believe it exactly in what Colton said, I think we need those habits. I think it's key, and I think I didn't have them. Um, I will tell you that there needs to also be a focus on uh, figuring out why the time to CT was so poor for a patient in Colton's example, and what can we do at a system level to improve these things? Because you find out you don't have to be so resilient when the patient gets to CT on time. Uh, And uh, I feel strongly about that too. So it's really a blend in my mind, not to get too far off subject, but um, that's how I feel about it. Right. There's so many leveling factors within the hospital that sets sets a tone for everything. And so, you know, I can't imagine having your patients like to do all of that. So yeah. But when you called him sensei, it, it made me laugh just a little bit, Dr. Lee, because it's like a lot of times on here, we show the example of like Dr. K being kind of like the grizzled old school, like I just got through it kind of thing. And you, <laughs> it's not that you're sensitive, but you're like the bright new and you have a different way of doing it. And it reminds me a little bit. I know um, you guys probably don't watch this, but I love Cobra Kai. It's like a dumb Netflix show, but it kind of reminds me a little bit like Dr. K, you know, it was like old school, like Johnny, like raised by the hard grizzled guys. And he just has that old school attitude. And then, you know, (laughs) Dr. Lee is more like sensitive, (laughs) slow and doing everything correctly. Uh, Like Daniel. Um, 
Yeah, sorry, that's probably just me, but that's what it makes me think of. So um, I'm probably the only one that watches that show. Dr. Lee, have you ever heard of it? I've heard <laughs> it. Uh, I unfortunately haven't watched it yet, but... Well, okay, probably don't. <laughs> Dr. Lee, as you finish, Colton, as you finish residency, one of the only things to good that will come out of it is you will have five years or so of movies to catch up on and TV shows. You're going to have a lot of Netflix binging ahead of you or whatever uh, platform is out at the time. I will say that I do also watch Cobra Kai and uh, it's totally nostalgic for me, oh, and my generation. Yep. And I will share uh, that. I don't know if I appreciate being equated with uh, Johnny and sweeping the leg. I don't know if that parts me being an old Johnny, but what I grown, up think, version. grown up version. Okay. And I actually don't drink Coors, the banquet of beer that Johnny drinks routinely. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will tell you that uh, it's really funny to me. And I think it shows uh, kind of the, that attitude of how things are so different now. It's really reflected mm -hmm. in Cobra Kai. It's really reflected in these conversations. And I have to agree with Colton. I think things have uh, changed substantially. And if we knew then what we knew now, I would definitely have built better habits, uh, just like Colton said. Yeah. I mean, but you were in the time of the 80 hour work week, not the 40. So when, I mean, I think it was Actually, probably a little bit harder. Just I want to, I want to, I want to own this for just a second as we wrap up. I was not in the 80 hour work week. My last oh, year were. as a chief, no, my last year as a chief resident is when it started. That's how old I am. And when it started, all it meant that first year was you had to send the intern home early. That was what it was. So I like to say that I felt I was almost the victim of the 80 hour work week because I spent all this time when it was not 80 hours and then it became 80 hours right at the end, right at the end, but not uh -huh. for me. And then as a fellow, my fellowship was still not constrained by the 80 hours uh, for transplantation. And that's when I did most of my micro sleep uh, during that. So this is mm -hmm. not to comment on whether it's a, a bad thing, a good thing, but, but what I, on a personal level, what I said is I always say the 80 hour work week really only made things more difficult for me <laughs> during the transition as far as manpower went to yeah. get all the stuff done. But I do think it's uh, what's here. And as a program director, I never speak again as when I was a program director, never spoke against it. I think it is the reality. I think uh, it does allow things like sleep maintenance and better longevity, for example, in our career. So it's important. Mm -hmm. uh, but I always share when people say, no, I was not the 80 hour work week. And all it did was get me on my way out the door. So <laughs> well, transitioning transitions are never easy. Transitions are always painful, even if they're for the better. So hashtag yeah, totally understatement. <laughs> hashtag understatement. That's yeah. Dr. Lee, anything else from you before we wrap up this whole nostalgic path that I keep pulling us down? So no, not much. Just kind of look at yourself as my advice to people and look at look at what's important to you and, and develop a sense of self-awareness and implement habits that help you build a foundation for the next four to five years, depending on what specialty you go into, plus years after that, if you do a fellowship, um, do a little pleasure reading right now and, uh, and, you know, start building yourself up because it's going to be tough and you're going to have a really hard time. Uh, and you're probably going to have a sense of imposter syndrome because people around you are going to look like they're amazing. Uh, but you all did the work to get there. Uh, and mm -hmm. you're just as good as the guy next to you. So just try and be the best version of yourself you can be. Right. Maybe find that person you think's amazing and, you know, make them your mentor like you did. <laughs> well, awesome guys. Thanks so much for being on. And, you know, I think this was an awesome thing to talk about and, you know, pretty soon we're going to get, really focused back on the app site because like Dr. Lee says, he wishes he would have started early. So we're going to help you with that. We're going to, we're going to be the thing that pushes you to start early, start thinking about it, to start studying. Like we're here for you. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And don't forget hashtag AppSite Smackdown. Get more AppSite content in your daily routine. Visit us on Instagram at daily.appsite.fact, on Facebook at AppSite Smackdown, or LinkedIn at AppSite Smackdown. And you can catch the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or any place you listen to your favorites. Don't forget our YouTube channel, AppSite Smackdown. <laughs>